Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. So on today's video tutorial guys, we are going to be tackling the grade 12 mathematical literacy paper 2 that was written in June 2023. And we're going to be using this paper to help us prepare for our June exam, right? Paper 2 guys contains a lot of measurement questions, a lot of maps and plans questions, right? And a lot of questions that just integrate your maps, plans, and your measurements, okay? So with this paper, you need to be able to understand what is area, right? And be able to think about it practically. You need to be able to understand volume and be able to basically think about it in a practical sense. What is it that we are talking about when we're talking about volume? Surface area, what is surface area practically, okay? Everything about this paper is like literally application of the concepts that you've learned. It's not just a matter of calculating area, calculating volume, right? But it's a matter of understanding that if I'm talking about volume, right, we're talking about how much something can hold, okay? So in other words, right, if they tell you that a volume of a box, right, is a particular amount and they want to determine how many books can I fit into that box, you need to be able to think, okay, if I want to determine how many books I can fit into to that box what am i supposed to do right that means that okay i need to determine how much space one book occupies right and if you are able to determine how much space one book occupies and you already know what the volume is of this whole box then you can go about finding out then how many books can I fit into this box? Okay, so paper two, guys, is really an application paper. You really need to be able to apply practically the concepts that you've learned throughout your years. So if you struggle with conversions, you'll struggle with this paper. If you struggle with just working with an equation, you will struggle with this paper, okay? If you struggle with just doing map work, you will struggle with this paper. So it's very important that with this paper, you really focus on your measurements, you really focus on your maps and plans, right? And you also just look at now integrations um, or how those concepts um, can be integrated together, okay? So it's very important that you look at that. Also, guys, I wanted to basically give you guys a reminder that I'm starting with my first official online zoom lessons this saturday on the 2nd of march right so i've basically gave you guys all the information that you guys needed um needed to know on this video tutorial so if you're still a bit clueless on how you can be part of the group please have a look at this video tutorial guys right so you just pay 350 and you get to attend two lessons per week right so in total you're attending eight lessons a month you get a study guide and you get an experienced tutor that will help you prepare for your june exams if you're an adult learner right i'd recommend that you join this group right because you'll find that you've done metric a long time ago so certain things you've forgotten so it's very important that you get guidance from a person that's basically experience that can help you with certain concepts that might confuse you if you're a grade 12 learner that is like getting 60 below right please join these online zoom lessons because they're really going to help you just watching a youtube video tutorial is not really going to help most especially if you are struggling with the work right because if you're struggling with something it's very hard for you to pinpoint where exactly you are not understanding so if you have the guidance of a tutor right the tutor will be will be able to actually see that oh actually this learner struggles here this learner doesn't understand what it means when i talk about parameter practically right and i can be able to then give you examples right that will help you better understand the concept so i'd highly recommend that you join these online zoom lessons guys okay it's only a maximum of 15 learners that will be in that group right and guys the spots are being taken really quickly okay i really think that by thursday right which is thursday is the 29th most learners would have been i think by thursday i'm probably going to be fully booked okay so please make sure that if you really need that additional support that you join these online um zoom lessons with me guys right whether it rains whether it hails whether it storms 
we are going to be proceeding with these lessons okay so please make sure that you take part it's going to be fun guys you are really going to enjoy um doing mathematical literacy um with me all right so without any further ado guys let's get started with today's video tutorial Like I mentioned, guys, in today's video tutorial, we're going to be tackling question 1.1. And question 1.1 basically tests to see whether you basically know the definitions of all topics, of all concepts that you have basically learned in mathematical literacy, okay? So if you're a person that basically studies um, for your exam by making use of the study guides, right? So the learners that are going to be in my Zoom um lessons right i'm going to be sharing with them the study guides that they need to basically use to prepare for their exams right and in these study guides right you get key concepts right for example there's a study guide for finance there's a study guide for data handling there's a study guide for um, maps plans and other representations of um the world right and in these study guides right as you page down right there's a page where they basically give you guys all the definition of all the concepts all the all the key concepts that will be discussed in that particular study guide right so it gives you all these definitions that you need to know okay as much as i mean i feel like it's not practical to literally learn all definitions um all off by heart but i feel like with these type of questions if you basically understand the work that you're doing you should be able to 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 pinpoint which term matches with which explanation okay but then also these study guides come with those key concepts where they give you definitions for in case you don't really understand what something means okay so you can basically go back or refer back um to the page where they basically explain certain um definitions okay so with this that's basically what you're going to be doing we're going to be reading all of these explanations and just basically figuring out what is being what is the concept that is being explained um with that definition okay so let's have a look it says in table one below is a list of explanations and definitions of concepts used in mathematical literacy okay so table one is explanations and definitions of concepts so let's basically have a look at all these definitions and try to see if we can basically pinpoint what concept they are basically talking about there what topic they are basically talking about them okay so let's see with a it says the distance from the center of a circle to the outer part of the circle so what could they be talking about there the distance from the center of the circle to the outer part what is that distance called do you guys remember we call that the radius okay let's have a look at b it says the use of cardinal directions um your north south east and west to describe the location of one point to the other so what are we usually doing okay if we use cardinal directions to describe the location of one point to another okay those cardinal directions are actually called what our compass our compass our compass directions okay right so remember those north naughty elephant sprays water those are compass directions let's have a look at c it says the path or the boundary that surrounds a circular shaped object or surface so we've got a circular shaped um object right and they're talking about the boundary that surrounds that circular shaped object okay so we know that that is what it's called the circumference let's have a look at d it says a position which is not exact but roughly shows the location of an object i'm thinking here yeah, if a position is not exact but roughly shows where an object is located right i'm just thinking with certain questions right those are questions that are usually asking you what is the general direction right so it's just like the general direction for example if they would give you like a map right and then they would give you like 
the compass here and then they say that this is north right so if that is north you already know that is east naughty elephant sprays water right and then they would put maybe something there and then they'd say where is h in relation to um e and then you would say that okay maybe because then if you were to draw a line from there to there right from e to h right then you'd say that okay the general direction from e to h right is the northwest okay so that's why i'm just thinking for this one right it's probably just the general direction so here when they talk about a position which is not exact but roughly shows the location of an object right that is just the general direction okay let's have a look at e it says a measure of body fat based on the height and the weight of an adult person right so here you should remember when we were basically dealing with body mass index, that's basically when they measure your body fat based on your height and your weight. Okay, so here we can see that, okay, they are talking about the BMI. Okay, then let's go to F, the total area of all the surfaces of a 3D shaped object, right? So if you've got like a 3D shaped object, I basically have like uh, my cube here and I've basically... I basically have my box here and I've opened that box up, right? What would we do if you wanted to determine all the total area of all of these faces, right? Of this box, right? We would be calculating what the surface area, okay? Because it's the area of all the surfaces um, of the box, okay? So that's fine, G. A special type of diagram used to determine the outcomes of an event in probability examples. So we know that when we're dealing with probabilities um, and we're basically working with a particular diagram that helps us determine events that we have. Do you guys remember that we're actually working with a tree diagram? Okay. Okay. So that is basically your tree diagram, right? H, the arrangement of something laid out, such as a such as the structural features of a mall. So when you're dealing with arrangements, right, of how something is laid out, okay, like how a mall is basically the structural aspects of the mall, right? We know that there, guys, we're either dealing with like a floor plan, right, or a layout plan, right? Or something along those lines. So do you see that the fact that you understand all the work that you've done before, you are actually able to just, you know, think about, okay, this is talking about this. This is talking about that. Okay. Let's look at I. It says the ratio of the distance in real life compared to the same distance on the map. So here with I, right, we're talking about a map scale, right? Because we are dealing with a map scale because a map scale will tell you that, okay, the units on paper to the units in real life, okay? So that is your map scale. Remember, we worked with your bar scales, we worked with your line scales, we worked with your, and we also worked with your number scale, okay? So here, basically, they are talking about map scales, okay? And then J, the rate of covering a certain distance over time so what is equal to distance over time do you guys remember that when we're dealing with distance over time we are dealing with we're actually calculating speed okay so do you see that the fact that we actually just understand if you literally just understand each and every concept that you go through okay these definitions are not really that hard, okay? Because you'll be able to just remember that, okay, what are they actually talking about here? What are they actually talking about there? All right, so we are done basically analyzing this table of explanations and definitions. Let's now have a look at these questions. What is actually going on here? Okay, so let's have a look at question 1.1. It says, use the information above to write down the letter of the explanation or definition. A to J of each of the following concepts, right? So here we're given what is BMI. So you need to say where were they basically giving us an explanation of BMI, okay? For 1.1.2, where were they giving us a definition of a circumference? For 1.1.3, where were they giving us a definition of a map scale? For 1.1.4, 
We were they giving us a definition of campus directions in 1.1.5 where were they giving us a definition of a tree diagram? So this is very easy because we've already, basically, as we were going down the list, we were writing down the name of the concept, right? So let's see, okay? We already see there was a circumference there. So for circumference, we'll match it with C. So circumference is C, okay? BMI, where did we talk about BMI? Okay, remember, E is a measure of the body fat based on the height and the weight of an adult person. That is BMI. So your 1.1.1 is E. All right. Let's have a look at map scale. Where did we say that, okay, here they are talking about map scales. Remember when they basically spoke about the ratio of the distance on paper compared to the distance in real life that was i okay so our i is the answer for 1.1.3 okay let's look at 1.1.4 the campus direction where were they talking about campus why am i saying campus <laughs> compass direction okay so here the use of the cardinal directions your north south east west to describe the location of one point to another that is a compass um, direction so that one is B okay and let's have a look at 1.1.5 where did we say that they were talking about a tree diagram right so here remember we said the special type of diagram that is used to determine the outcomes of an event in probability examples right so that is our G okay so that is the final answer for question 1.1 okay okay so the final answers is E, it's C, it's I, it's B, and it's G. Okay, and you get two marks for basically um, getting each one of those correct. Okay, so that is it for today's video tutorial. Nice and sweet, guys. But you know, with me, I really just love going into the details so that you guys really understand what's going on instead of just me giving you guys the answers, okay? So obviously, the video tutorials will be slightly longer just because of that, okay? So in the next video tutorial, guys, we're going to be having a look at question 1.2. And in question 1.2, guys, we are literally going to be interpreting information that is given to us in a mixture A. So it's also still one of those... You know, for, for your paper two, okay, question one basically has your level one type questions, okay? So you can literally get 20%, okay, of this paper, provided that you read your questions properly, you know, you understand all the concepts that you've learned. What is it? When What are we really talking about when you're talking about this topic or when you're talking about this topic in general, right? You'll just get your 20% and just being able to interpret information, just analyzing diagrams that are given to you, you'll literally just get 20%, okay? So please make sure that you score, okay? Most especially in question one for paper two. So I'll see you guys on my next upload. And that is it, guys. And I'll see you guys on my next upload, a Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. Bye, guys. I'm not afraid of